Hello everyone, how are you? This lecture we will continue with flavonoids chapter. Uh, today we will discuss mainly the part 2 of flavonoids. In, the, in our last lecture we discussed the definition of flavonoid, chemistry of flavonoid and classification of flavonoids with various examples. This lecture mainly we will be discussing the biosynthesis, extraction and isolation of flavonoids and also we will be discussing in detail and the significance of flavonoids. So at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to describe biosynthesis, extraction, isolation of flavonoids and explain the significance of flavonoids. Now first coming to the biosynthesis of flavonoids. The biosynthesis of flavonoids are mainly a mixture of two biosynthetic pathways. First of all, uh, the cinnamoil, it is synthesized from the mixture of cinnamoil coenzyme A and three molecules of melonyl coenzyme A. Here the melonyl coenzyme A is available from the cicumic acid pathway whereas the melonyl coenzyme A it is available from the acetate pathway. And also I would like to mention here that this cinnamoil coenzyme A it represents the precursor or it is the precursor for the formation of 6 carbon and 3 carbon. 6 carbon of mainly the ring B. Whereas the melanin coenzyme A, coenzyme A is responsible for the formation of 6 carbon of ring A of the flavonoid structure. I hope you remember the structure of flavonoid that we have discussed in our previous lecture. So, cinnamol coenzyme A and 3 molecule of melanin coenzyme A, they combine together from two different pathways and they form the triketide starter unit, which on further cyclization with the help of an enzyme known as chalcon synthase result in the formation of chalcon or uh, chalcon derivative or chalcon group of flavonoids if you look at this here the first ring formation takes place this is the ring a of the flavonoid structure which is connected to the again three carbons carbon one two three to the ring b this chalcon again upon further cyclization it results in the formation of benzopyranone ring of, uh, of the nuclear that is flavanone. If you look at the difference between these two structures, chalcon and flavanone, here the three carbons are arranged in acyclic form. Notice carefully, the OH is not linked to this carbon, third carbon. It's a open chain acyclic form. Whereas in flavon flavanone structure, the three carbons are arranged in the form of ring, which forms a pyranone ring when it is fused with the ring A, it is known as benzopyranone ring. Then this flavanone can further undergo either hydroxylation or oxidation. So first of all, if it undergoes hydroxylation at the third position, it forms flavanonol. And then this flavanonol on further oxidation results in the formation of anthocyanidin group of flavonoids. Similarly, if the flavanone it undergoes oxidation at carbon number uh, position 2 and 3. It results in the formation of the structure flavone. If you see the structural difference between flavone and flavanone, only the presence and absence of double bond between carbon uh, 2 and 3. I hope you remember the numbering. Numbering starts from here, ring oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then this flavanone, uh, this sorry, this flavone on further hydroxylation at the third position results in the formation of flavonol and once again I would like to bring it to your notice which we have already discussed in our previous lecture the difference between uh, flavonol and uh, flavonol you see the difference is the presence of double bond and absence of double bond same thing I have already given the slide, the flavonoids are product of mixed biosynthesis which I have already explained. Mixed biosynthesis form cinnamoyl coenzyme A which is responsible or which, act, uh, which is responsible as a precursor for the formation of 6 carbon and 3 carbon uh, and obtained from the sigmate pathway and it combines with 3 molecules of melonyl coenzyme A uh, which is uh, obtained from the acetate pathway. And then the triketide starter unit which is formed by the combination of this melonyl coenzyme A and cinnamoyl coenzyme A 
further undergo cyclization by the enzyme chalcon synthase to generate chalcon group of flavonoids. Cyclization of chalcon then occurs to give a pyranone ring containing flavonone nucleus. And flavonone can either undergo oxidation of C2 and C3 bond of pyranone ring to give flavone structure or it can undergo hydroxylation at C3 of pyranone ring to give the uh, flavonone. Similarly, the flavonorol may further undergo oxidation to give rise to anthocyanidin uh, structure of the flavonoid class. Now, regarding the formation of glycosides, we know the difference between egg glycon and glycoside. Glycosides are formed by the addition of a sugar moiety to a different hydroxyl groups of the flavonoid structure. Okay. Two of the examples I would like to give here. For example, in chalcon, when the uh, sugar like glucose and remnants add as a disaccharide, it forms the naringin dihydrochalcone, which is found to be 1000 times sweeter than table sugar. Similarly, another example, if you look at the structure of flavonone, here the seven hydroxyl group, when it undergo glycosylation, uh, it attached with the uh, again uh, disaccharide that is glucose and remnose it results in the formation of naringin and interestingly it is bitter in taste if you look at the structural difference between naringin and naringin dihydrochalcon it is they differ mainly in the arrangement of three carbon atoms in case of naringin dihydrochalcon the three carbon atoms they are in alicyclic open chain form it is not in cyclic form. You can see there is no bond between OH and this carbon. Okay, and you see the little change in arrangement of three carbon atom completely change the properties of the flavonoid. So this one, the naringin dihydrochalcon is 1000 times sweeter, whereas when the three carbon remains in cyclic form, the naringin is bitter in taste. Now coming to the exam, some of the other examples of flavonoid glycosides. The first example I would like to give, I mean third example, we have already seen two examples, routine. If you look at the structure, can you tell me the routine is a glycoside of which type of flavonoid? It's a glycoside of flavone structure. You see there is a keto group at the four, fourth position and double bond between C2 and 3. And this routine uh, has the property of decreasing uh, you can say uh, has the capability of decreasing capillary fragility and hence it is mainly used for the treatment of dermatitis. Another example is asparidine. If you look at the structure of asparidine, it's a glycoside of flavonone, not flavone, unlike this one. This is a glycoside of flavone, whereas this is the glycoside of flavonone. It is also known as vitamin P. Another example would be the pelargonine. Look the structure of pelargonine, it is the glycoside of anthocyanidine because it contains pyrillium ion or oxonium ion with positive charge. Now coming to the extraction and isolation process of flavonoids, since flavonoids are uh, polyphenolic in nature, they are mainly extracted from plants okay, uh, with ethanol, methanol or water. After extraction, they are also purified in many different ways. One of the way of purification is with alkaline solution or precipitation with lead acetate. And regarding separation again, they can be separated by following different types of chromatography or, and where, or in other words, you can say different class of flavonoids can be separated by column chromatography, one of the example which is conventionally used most frequently. Okay. Other than column chromatography also, you can use different other types of chromatographic techniques to separate the different types of flavonoids from the extract. Now coming to the significance of flavonoids, the first and most important significance of flavonoid is that ecological, their ecological importance in nature. They, flavonoids, they mainly help in dispersal of seed as well as pollination of plant. As you all know, the pollination of plant is an important step in the process of plant 
the production. And I would like to add a note here, the pollination plants mainly depends on two process. First of all, the uh, depends on the action of abiotic forces like wind and the water flow, water mainly from the rain, which helps in the dispersal of seed and pollination as well. And most importantly, the pollination, 80% of the pollination depends on animals like flies, birds, beetles and other insects. And now the question is, how flavonoids aids in or help in the pollination and dispersal of seed? Because, if you remember, we discussed in the last lecture, the flavonoids act as a color attractants to insects and birds. Color attracting because flavonoids are responsible for giving not only yellow color but different other color to the uh, different parts of the plants so acting as a color attractant they attract the birds flies and when the birds and flies come and they go away and uh, they take away the various pollen grains and seeds along with them and helps to disperse them to other part of the region and it is and this process is also uh, important for evolution of the plant species Even the colorless flavonoids absorb light in the UV spectrum due to the presence of extensive amount of chromophores in them, which may not be visible to human eyes, but they are visible to insects, many insects. It is to be noted that the human eyes can recognize the color of compound on, only when it is by perceiving the uh, reflected or transmitted light of uh, wavelength between 380 and 730 nanometer whereas the insect can recognize the light of shorter wavelength that's why the that's what it means the colorless flavonoids can absorb light in the UV spectrum which might be visible to many insect even though it's not visible to human eyes now going to the next important significance okay uh, before I go to the next important significant role of flavonoid, I'd like to mention, add a note again here. The studies of the different types of flavonoids by UV spectroscopies have revealed that the most of the flavonoid consists of two major absorption maxima, that is uh, the band 2, which comprises uh, uh, between uh, 240 to 285 nanometer because of the benzoyl ring. Uh, benzoyl system of the ring A and the band A which lies between 300 to 400 nanometer because of the cinnamoy system of the ring B. Now coming to next significance of flavonoid, they are responsible of for the taste of many food as well because they uh, because of the chemical properties they can change the just taste of food or they can provide a particular taste to a particular food. For example, naringin we have discussed just now, which contain a flavonoid, which is a type of flavonoid uh, uh, glycoside. It's bitter and astringent in taste, which is mainly occur in the peels of grapefruit. Similarly, another structure, naringin dihydrochalcone glycoside, okay with no with no pyranon ring and it is see just because of the absence of pyranon ring it is found to be exceptionally sweet even 1000 times sweeter than table sugar that is sucrose another important uh, significance of flavonoid is plant defense system flavonoid again is very helpful and uh, responsible for protecting the plant against many fungal parasites, pathogens, herbivores, and even UV radiation. One of the example is uh, rotinone. So here I would like to uh, discuss one of the concept known as allelopathy. Allelopathy, uh, the concept is mainly used for plant defense system. What is allelopathy? Now, Coming to the definition of allelopathy, it is a process by which, imagine there are two plants, plant A and plant B. So allelopathy is a process where a plant A, okay, uh, plant A 
uh, secrete really certain compound as because of their metabolism which prevent the uh, growth and development of plant B. So such compounds which is released by, uh, released by one plant and uh, which is protecting that plant by inhibiting the growth and development of another plant. This kind of compounds are known as allelopathic compounds. Okay, and this concept itself is known as allelopathic and there are many flavonoids in nature which has these allelopathic properties and as a result of which, as a result of this allelopathic property, flavonoids also help a particular plant to protect itself from other pathogen, insects or different other weeds. We would see, we, we would like to see certain examples. So as I mentioned, flavonoid influence the vegetation and success of certain plant by inhibiting the germination and growth of other seedlings. Most common example is the flavonoid, uh, example with flavonoid uh, allelopathic, uh, allelopathic properties is the rice plant that is the botanical name Origa sativa, belongs to the family Poesi. The rice plant found to contain two flavonoid derivatives which has, uh, which have uh, the allelopathic properties. What are they? The first one is, if you look at the structure, it is a, a flavone structure. The name of the structure is, you count the number of hydroxyl group, the 5, 7 and uh, 4 dash trihydroxy and 3 dash 5 dash dimethoxy flavone, which is uh, found to be a allelopathic inhibitor of weeds and pathogen weeds mainly examples of which that is uh, cypress deformis and cypress area another compound similarly you can see uh, 7 and 4 dash dihydroxyflavone structure which is also having allelopathic uh, properties which is an uh, you can say which is an allelopathic inhibitor of seed germination so these are the two examples of flavonoid derivatives having allelopathic properties similarly there are many other examples Again, I would like to add a note about allelopathy. Allelopathy of weeds is an important factor, or you can say it is considered as one of the most important factor because it imposes great limitation on the development of agricultural activity and they are also very difficult to eradicate. This is because these weeds are also able to uh, synthesize and store and release certain chemicals which has allelopathic properties uh, to the environment and those weeds which dominate over our desired crops that means the chemical present in those weeds they have stronger allelopathic properties it, it is interesting to note that there are many biopesticides that are available in the market based on flavonoids they display and the great allelopathic properties against various weeds and these flavonoid based biopesticides are considered as an efficient natural defense system against them, mainly against those weeds. Now coming to the next significant property of flavonoids, that is the dietary significance. As we have already seen, flavonoids are polyphenolic in nature. So being polyphenolic, they act as a strong natural antioxidant and uh, we have already studied in our pharmacology and it is already known to all of us there are many diseases in the body which can be worsened due to the presence of free radicals and these flavonoids are found to be a, a, a free radical scavenger very good scavenger of free radical not only that they can also inactivate peroxides so with this we would like to finish here today we will continue with part two uh, uh, sorry the part three in our next lecture thank you for your attention see you again